Thorlabs Vitran LDC cleavers are capable of high precision cleaving of glass fibres with diameters ranging from 80 micron to 1250 micron cladding. In this video we will demonstrate how LDC 401A cleavers are used to produce angled cleaved fibres with angles up to 15 degrees. The cleavers use a tension and scribe technique. A rotational stage on this cleaver also twists the fibre before it is pulled to the cleave tension. It is this twist that applies torsion to the fibre and produces an angled rather than a flat cleave. For a flat cleave, the tension and scribe method places the fibre under a known tension. The cleave blade then moves gradually forwards in a pecking motion until the blade just strikes the fibre. This causes a scribe mark on the fibre surface. The fibre tension then causes this scribe mark to propagate over the cross section of the fibre and creates the cleave. The cleave plane is perpendicular to the direction of the resultant stress applied to the fibre. A flat cleave is achieved by applying a known tensile stress along the axis of the fibre. This is the only stress applied to the fibre and so the cleave plane will be perpendicular to this stress direction and flat across the cross section of the fibre. This results in a flat cleave across the end of the fibre. For more information on how to perform a flat cleave, please click on the annotation to watch a video and learn more. To achieve an angled cleave, the fibre is placed under both a known tensile and torsional stress. Now the resultant stress is at an angle to the fibre axis and results in an angled cleave plane across the fibre. When the blade strikes the fibre, the crack propagates across the cleave plane and results in an angled cleave. If you are performing the angled cleave for the first time, it will be necessary for you to use the handset controller to set up a new file. Input the fibre diameter and clamping distance. Also input the desired cleave angle. Use the auto parameter tool to suggest an appropriate axial fibre tension. The controller will also determine the angle for the rotation stage required to achieve this cleave angle. However, it should be noted that some iteration from this suggested starting value may be required, especially for large cleave angles. Once you have input the required parameters, save as to save the file. Ensure that inserts appropriate for the dimensions of the fibre being cleaved are loaded into the left and right hand side fibre holding blocks. If you have not already watched the video about installing cleaver inserts, click on the annotation to view this first. Ensure that both the left and right fibre holding blocks and inserts are clean and free from debris, clean if required. To prepare the fibre for cleaving, it will need to be stripped and cleaned. It may be helpful to mark the intended strip length. To ensure good cleave angle repeatability, the strip shoulder should be positioned so that it is not clamped by the left fibre holding block lid. Lay a length of clean fibre in the cleaver with the end extending to the far side of the right fibre holding block lid. Then use a felt tipped marker to mark where you want the strip shoulder to be. Now use an appropriate strip tool to remove the coating up to this strip shoulder. Use a wipe soaked in a solvent to thoroughly clean both the stripped portion of the fibre as well as the section of coating that will be clamped in the left fibre holding block. With your thumb and forefinger rotate the fibre so that the curl is down. If the cleave file has vacuum enabled Press the start button to initiate the vacuum and then lay the fibre into the v-groove of the inserts. The fibre holding block lids should always be closed left to right. 
If a transfer insert is being used in the left block, close the transfer clamp lid first, then lower the left lid and gently lift the cam lever to fully close it. Before closing the right lid, use soft tip tweezers to lift the fibre out of the right insert and allow the vacuum to draw it back into the V-groove. This will release any unwanted torsion caused as the fibre was loaded. Now lower the right lid and gently lift the cam lever to fully close it. Press the start button again to activate the cleave. First, the rotation stage will rotate the right hand side fibre holding block by the angle set in the cleave file. This will apply torsional stress to the fibre. Then, the left fibre holding block will move slowly left, applying tensile stress along the axis of the fibre. Once the required axial cleave tension is reached, the cleave blade will advance to its pre-cleave position. It should not strike the fibre during this move. Then the blade will oscillate and advance forward. The combination of the axial and torsional stress means that when the blade strikes the fibre, the scribe mark will propagate through the fibre, producing an angled cleave. To remove the cleaved fibre, press down on the left cam lever and fully open the lid. Then, ensuring that the cleaved end does not make contact with any surfaces, lift the fibre out of the left side of the cleaver, either on its own or captured in the transfer insert. Press down on the right cam lever and fully open the lid of the right hand side fibre holding block. The right scrap section of fibre can then be removed and disposed of appropriately. The cleave angle can be measured using an appropriate device such as an interferometer or a Thorlabs Vitran glass processor such as a GPX. Whenever two fibres are aligned in side view, the FFS3 software uses the camera image to estimate the cleave angles of the left and right fibres. The results are displayed in the status bar. As the fibre's rotation affects the angle seen on screen, the fibre holding block holding the cleaved fibre should be rotated to ensure that the camera image shows the largest angle possible on screen. This will ensure that when the align process is run, it will output an angle that best matches the true cleave angle. If the measured cleave angle does not match that required, the handset controller can be used to adjust the cleave rotation angle accordingly. Another fibre can be cleaved using the approach described earlier and the new cleave angle measured. Several iterations may be needed to determine the rotation angle that needs to be input into the controller to achieve the actual physical cleave angle desired, especially for large angle cleaves. If you have any questions or concerns, please email us either at techsupport@thorlabs.com or vitran.uk at thorlabs.com